Hello photographers, my name is Spiros Heniatis and this is where I answer your photography questions and we learn about photography together. This week we're going to take a step away from the camera because we've talked a lot about using the camera over the last several months into last year and I realized that it's been quite a while since I've actually shown you guys how to take a photo, a setup, an experiment, something that you can try. So I'm going to do that today. What I want to show you is my 365 project. And if you don't know what a 365 is, it's a photo a day project where you commit to take a photograph every single day for an entire year. And what you take a photograph of is entirely up to you. Now, this is my second 365 project. The first I did back in 2009, and it was a daily self portrait. If you want to see those photos, you can check the link down in the description. What I'm doing this year is food. And I know food photography gets a little bit of a bad rap because of things like Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and this is what I'm having for lunch and the picture that you take of that but I'm doing something a little bit different. I've been sharing these photos on my Facebook, Instagram and Flickr and the common question that I'm getting from people is how do I set these up and you can see it's a really nice clean simple setup. I've got a white background and I'm arranging the food in a particular way to work on the composition and then I photograph it. So what I'm going to do today is show you how to do this setup and what's great about this setup is it's not good for just food. You can use this to photograph photograph any small kind of object because once you get the setup down whatever you photograph is entirely up to you. So let's take a look at how this works. So here you can see my setup right here and this is a really simple and really cheap setup which is what makes it so fun and amazing and easy to use. And what I've got here is my laptop and my laptop actually serves as my backdrop holder. And what I've done is I've taped a piece of white paper to the back of my laptop and that comes down and creates my seamless white background. Now you'll see I've got two lights set up here. The first light is above hanging on top of the laptop pointing straight down and this light isn't necessarily to illuminate my subject although some of that light hits the subject. This light is principally to light up the background. That's what gives me the clean white background look. And then what I've got over here is my second light. And this light I position wherever I want it in order to light my subject up the way I want it lit. So it's a very simple two light setup and allows me a lot of versatility to work with my subject but it gives me a consistent look and that's what I want in this particular project because what I'm going for is arranging and composing the subject and keeping the lighting pretty much consistent from shot to shot to shot. Now these lights that I'm using here are cheap lights that I picked up at Goodwill. They're actually grow lights, but you don't have to use grow lights. These are just the lights that I found. They were $3.99 each, so I spent $8 on my lighting. The last thing to consider is how you arrange your subject. And for me, I'm arranging food. And sometimes food doesn't sit the way you want it to sit, depending upon the kind of food that it is. So what I actually do to arrange things, like I have these tomatoes arranged here, is I have a piece of foam core board underneath the white sheet of paper and I stick nails up through that foam core board so that I can impale the food items onto the nails and position them precisely where I want them. So this is a really simple setup and what I'm going to do now is plug in the lights and I'm actually going to take the photos and show you what the photos look like and then I'll very quickly take you through my editing process. All right we've got everything all set up. The last thing we need to do is just get the settings dialed in on the camera and I'm using aperture priority mode on the Pentax Q7 and when I'm shooting these I want maximum depth of field and what I do is I set it to f8 and I watch my shutter speed to make sure that it's going to be fast enough for a sharp shot. I like to keep it around at least 1 50th of a second. So I adjust my ISO based upon the subject and the lighting to get that shutter speed where I want it. So right now as we take a look at this and get ready to take this photo here, I'm at f8 and ISO 200 from last night and I'm getting 1 200th of a second which is quite high. So I'm going to go down to 1 100th of a second because there's no reason I can't do that and still have a good shutter speed. And now all that's left to do is compose and take the shot. So let me get it dialed in here and get a little bit of focus and snap a few pictures. And I like to just take a few shots and play with the composition until I get something that I like. 
So I've got a few shots here and I think I've got one that I like. So now we're gonna switch over to the computer and I'm gonna show you how I edit these. Okay, so I've already imported the pictures into Lightroom and picked out the one that I wanna work on. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna correct the white balance on this shot because those grow lights give off a bluish cast. And I don't bother correcting that in camera because it is so easy to do in Lightroom here. I'm just gonna click the eyedropper tool and I'm gonna click the background, which I know is white, and boom, my white balance is corrected just like that, which is really nice. And now as I'm looking at this, I see from my histogram in the upper right hand corner of the screen here that my exposure was a little bit low. And I could go reshoot this and change my exposure compensation to let in more light, but this is a raw photo, so I'm just gonna take my exposure slider and I'm gonna slide that up until it looks good. And I think I'm gonna go up to about plus one stop. So I'm just gonna type that in there. And at plus one stop, I like the look overall. Now I'm not done editing, so this isn't the final shot because the next thing we gotta do is we gotta add some contrast into this shot. So let's take the contrast and bring that up. And I think I'm gonna bring it up to around, oh, I don't know, 50. As I look at this shot, I also usually take the highlights all the way up to 100. And what that does is that cleans up my background a little bit more. You can see as I'm sliding it back and forth that it's taking it up and down. So I'm gonna go up to plus 100 on my highlights. And then I'm gonna add some micro contrast. That's the clarity slider. And you're really gonna see a change in the tomatoes when I add that adjustment in. And I think I'm gonna take that up to about 30. Now, the last thing I wanna do here with the presence option is to take the saturation. I'm gonna bump that up just a little bit. Now the colors still look pretty crazy, but I know that. I know that because of these grow lights in my Pentax that my reds tend to be pinkish. So what I'm gonna do is come down here to my hue saturation tool and under hue, I'm gonna work with the red and I'm gonna take that red and I'm gonna make it more orangey almost so that the tomatoes look truer to color. And I'm gonna take that up to about 18 right here. Looks pretty good. So now those tomatoes look more tomato-like and less like this great big blazing ball of pinkish red. After that, the last couple things that I do is I sharpen the image. So I'm gonna come down here to the detail. And when I sharpen, I always zoom in on an area that's important. And this is important to me. So I'm gonna zoom in there and I'm gonna take the sharpening slider and I'm gonna pull it up and I'm just gonna watch as that crispens up a little bit. And I usually land around plus 50, which looks pretty good here. And I'm gonna back that out again. And finally, one last correction that I'm gonna make is the lens correction. I enable profile collection. In Lightroom, you'll notice that already it picked out that this is a Pentax and it's the standard zoom for the Q7. And I have two setting options, the distortion and vignetting. And I haven't had a problem with distortion with these shots, but I do get a little bit of vignetting that I wanna clean up. So I just take that vignetting slider all the way up to 200, which just cleans up the corners a little bit. And that is it. That's how I edit these shots. And now I've got my food photo for today. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. I hope you enjoyed this week's video, and I hope you enjoy using this setup. It is so simple and so cheap and effective. It's great for small objects. It's great for food. It's great for product photography. In fact, your imagination is the only limit on the kind of pictures you can take with this beautifully simple setup. So do me a favor and let me know down in the comments, what are you going to shoot with this setup? And while you're down there, let me know if you're shooting a 365 project. And if you are, what is your project and where can I see your photos? Now, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And if you really like this video maybe do me a favor and share it with your friends but most importantly guys get out there and take some damn photos and i'll see you guys next week let's see if i can do this